All right, in this video, we're going to improve the gun. So the first thing you want to do is download some gun audio. So I'm going to go into audio and then just search weapon. Search by price. There's a few different options. Um, I've tried this one before, so let's go ahead and just take that. Import. And I just want fire. So that brought in this mental dream assets folder, put that in imported. Okay, it looks good. Or I should say sounds good. Now um, the basic gun we'll we'll use that to control the audio for the weapon. So public uh, audio clip um, shot sound. And then find that and drag it into the new field. Um, and now we're going to want to play that sound whenever the user fires the weapon. Um, it's, it's good practice to also have an audio source on the weapon. So we're going to we're going to add an audio source, and, th and that'll give us more control, like we can play with the volume and stuff on there. Uh, and then let's get a reference to that. Public, audio source, audio source. And this is the convention I use. Uh, um, the type is capitalized, and then my reference to the type is lowercase. Um, now you can see it created a field for that, and uh, it's going to reference its own audio source. So I'm just dragging I'm dragging the sci-fi rifle onto itself to give it a reference to its own audio source. And now we can use that to play sounds. So when the user pushes the mouse button down, um, I'm trying to decide if I want to have like some actual ammo. Like we could have like 15, bu 15 bullets per clip and then the, the user could reload after a certain amount of time. Uh, I think for now, I'll just stick with infinite bullets, um, but we do want to slow it down. So let's do public float um, shot, no, let's say fire cooldown interval, and then private float fire cooldown. So when when the user fires, um, we don't we don't want it to shoot every single frame, because people with faster computers are going to be able to fire faster. Like like if you're running 100 frames per second versus if you're running 30 frames per second, the the person with the faster computer has an advantage. So we're just going to slow this down, and make we're going to make sure we only fire if time dot time is greater than fire cooldown. So, um, fire cooldown off the bat is at zero, and so of course time to time is greater than that, so we're going to fire. Um, and then after we fire the bullet, we're going to set fire cooldown to time dot time plus fire cooldown interval, like that. And then we can set this in the inspector and sort of like tweak the values. Fire cooldown interval, first off, let's just set it to 0.5 and see how that does. So it should only fire once every half second. And there you go. That's what it's doing. Um, we definitely want it to fire faster than that. So let's do uh, 0.2. Yeah, th I'm okay with that. And now we can play the noise. Um, audio source dot play one shot shot sound sounds pretty good it's kinda loud it's definitely distracting so go into the audio source and drag down the volume 
That's better. And the bolts, of course, don't look very realistic. Uh, I wonder if this gun pack came with any bullets. No, it did not. Uh, so, why don't we just use capsules? No, I don't know. Maybe I can find a bullet asset. Bullet. Yeah, I'm just going to take the bullet from this one. Okay, so I just brought in a close quarters assault rifle, and go into the scene view. It's tiny. <laughs> Can I? Seems like the bullet is like attached to it. Go ahead and expand that. I just want one bullet. So I'm gonna. Go to my prefabs folder, drag down that bullet, delete the assault rifle. And that's a pretty tiny bullet. So, this is the bullet we were using before, and this is the new bullet. I'm going to go ahead and expand this quite a bit. And. Uh, add that die after time script with two seconds. Uh, we also need a rigid body. Turn off gravity. What else? And we can just use a box collider for this one too. So let's collapse these. Looks like everything's there. So now, we don't need this old bullet anymore. We're just going to use the new one. So find your gun. Oh yeah. And then make sure you apply the changes, because you can see in the bullet prefab, it doesn't have these components yet. you got to click on the new one and click apply. And now, th now they're here. So go to the gun and give it this new bullet prefab. And I know one thing we're going to want to change is, uh, I was randomizing the rotation before, but now now we want them to be facing forward. So we're going to do muzzle.transform.forward for the rotation in the instantiated object in the basic gun script. Something broke. Um, oh. And uh, transform dot rotation. It, it needs to be transformed out rotation. It's a quaternion value, not a vector three. All right, that's looking a little bit better. Uh, rather than destroying the bullets when they hit the guy, I think I'm just gonna let them bounce off. So right, right here, when we collide with the bullet. We were destroying the bullet on line 39. I'm just going to delete that. So the bullets will remain intact until they time out after two seconds. Uh, and then I, I just want to make them a little bit bigger. Um, I Let's see, this is the z-axis. I want to make them wider and taller but not longer. Apply that. 5, 5, 3.7. And let's try this again. 
Yeah, that looks better. Make the gun shoot faster. Point one. I don't really like the way they're hitting the capsule, um, so I'm just going to delete... No... I'm just... I'm going to shrink the capsule collider. We can still use that for the main collider. Let's just give it a radius of like 0.5. And on top of that, I'm going to create a box. so that we can just sort of like square up his chest like that and then just delete the mesh renderer Oh, now the bullets aren't hitting him because this box collider is a separate object. So that, that was actually a bad idea. So go back to Axon. I think you can give him... Okay. I, at first I thought that you couldn't have two colliders on one object, but you can. So give him a box collider. And move that up by about two. That'll be fine. I don't like how he's getting pushed around by the bullets. So let's go to his video body and just give him mass of like a thousand. So he's a lot heavier than the bullets are. So it doesn't really matter how much momentum the bullets have. They're not going to phase him. And I'm going to pause this as the bullets hit him. Uh, zoom in on him. The box collider is kind of like inside him. Uh, how, I'm not sure how I want to deal with that. And the capsule collider is kind of behind him too. I could like move it forward and rotate it, but just doesn't really seem like a good solution. And I, I could also put one directly on his chest, and then it would stay with him. Um, but but the root object is not going to notice the collisions of, of the child objects. I, I could put a, a, a separate script on the chest that sort of like passed the damage up to the root object, but it just seems like kind of a pain in the ass. I guess I'm just going to rotate this collider and just kind of push it forward. Well, maybe I can't rotate it. I know I can push it forward though. 0 0.5. That's not what I want. 0.5, 0 0.2. Okay, well, and now that now it looks more like they're bouncing off his chest. And you can hear it making noise as he takes damage. Then he starts smashing the ground. And he's got a lot of hit points. I 
I just noticed that it's not putting his health. So I, I made a mistake when I created the new bullet. So you can see uh, the bullet prefab right here. It's not on our projectile layer. Um, Axon's health script is only looking at things on layer 9. So now that that's fixed, he actually takes damage. And let's go ahead and duplicate him with Control D and put him behind the player by like 100 feet. So as we're running away, the second one pops up. Oh no! I don't like how they're moving into each other. We definitely need to expand that capsule collider on both of them. Capsule collider. It needs to be as wide as his arms are. Radius 1. Let's do point 0.8. Yeah, that should be okay. And now we can just drop him into our prefabs folder and then create as many as we want. And they still phase into each other a little bit, but it's, it's not as bad as it was. Yeah, I'm cutting this video off here.